What we are saying is have a heart. We've got to be able to be generous. So when there people who are kind, people are cruel, but that's life. You can be bigger about things. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Now, we have actually been taking a rather uh, personalized view of the debt situation, but I would like to take a step back, to take a more macro view, and I think uh, I'd like to, to tap on Dr. Siri's expertise here, um, where there are certain things that we have said, that we have the highest bankruptcy since 2009, but that I may have to be put into context, whether in fact it is compared to other countries very high. Um, that young people in the 30s are burdened with debts of 80,000. We have increasing mortgage defaults, credit card debt has ballooned. Um, Dr. Siri, maybe you can give us a macro view of the situation in Singapore. Certainly, and I think that uh, the best way um, to analyze this situation is to look at the, uh, the, the fact. And here I have prepared uh, an analysis and I will give the handouts. Um, so, w as we look uh, together, perhaps uh, the numbers would um, would show the situation. Uh, I feel like better. a university student. <laughs> <laughs> but there is no final exam today. <laughs> All right. So, but what we see here is the latest Singapore household balance sheet. It tells us the assets that the household sector in Singapore, which consists of uh, Singaporean and PR families, uh, the assets that they own. And under the assets, we can see the uh, assets are divided into two main categories, financial assets, such as currency, deposits in the bank, shares, and so on. And then another major category of the assets are residential property such as public housing, HDB, and private condos, and so on. Now, when you look a little bit lower, you will see the liabilities of the household. These are mortgages, mortgage loans, and also personal loans that they have. And under personal loans, you see the motor vehicle loans, credit uh, card loans, um, and other kinds of loans that, uh, particularly the credit card that we have been talking uh, about. Now, when you take the assets of the household minus the liabilities of the household, what is left is called the net worth, which is the top line. So net worth is basically what household actually own after taking out all sorts of liabilities that they would have. When you look over the uh, period of uh, five years that I have, uh, that I downloaded here from uh, SingStat, you can see this that... This starts from 2010? Yes, 2010, to the current year. Uh, uh, end of 2010 quarter one until end of 2014 quarter one. What we have been talking about, I will tackle a few things. Um, when you see talk about the debt situation, you notice the liabilities of household. The majority of that is mortgage. Yeah? And I, for your convenience, I crunch some ratio. So you, if you do look under the category ratio analysis, you can see that mortgages over total liabilities is 74%. In other words, Singaporeans' debt, 74% of it is in the mortgages. And that one is quite consistent with the fact that Singaporeans have the highest home ownership in the world. In the world. About 19 to 92% if my my recollection and is three correct. quarters of the debt they owe goes to goes buying to buying property. houses okay yeah and so when you say that uh, young people age in their 30s own 80,000 uh, in debt that one in fact is really not very surprising because a lot of people own 
but purchase their own home. So then they have mortgage uh, debt, right? Now, I saw a lot of statistics that people quote, such as debt is the highest and debt uh, over GDP is X and Y percent and so on. When you think about it, those are useless numbers. Those ratios tell you absolutely nothing. What you worry about the debt situation is the ability to pay the debt. You it's sound not, like a banker. It's not how much, right? It's not how much you have, you, you have in debt, but it's the ability okay. that you service the debt. So let's come back to the household sector to see if they have the ability to service the debt. Back to the ratio. You look at the total liabilities over total assets. It has been consistent at 0 0.15 to 0 0.16 over the last five In years. In this case, yeah. the smaller the number, the better it is. Exactly. So what it means here is the following. When you have total liabilities over total assets of 0 0.16, it means that for every dollar of assets that Singaporean households has, it has only 16 cent in liabilities. But what is still more important than this number is the ability to service the debt, right? So we have to look at two more factors. What tells you about the ability to pay your debt in a timely manner? Your liquidity. Right? How much? You can just write check and pay off. So let's take a look at the ratio again. Cash deposit over total liabilities end of quarter 1, 2014 is 1.17. What it means here is household has a dollar and 17 cent to pay off the total liabilities of one dollar. And th this one is just coming from their bank account. So Singaporean household basically can just write their check or go to the bank and take out their deposit and pay off all their liabilities, mortgages, credit cards, etc without having to liquidate their houses, without having to liquidate their stocks and bonds. Um, of course, Dr. Siri is an um, expert in macroeconomics. I'm not, okay? But okay. I just want to clarify a couple of yeah. things. Just now, the 80,000 debts, yes. $80,000 debts, uh, I think it's probably referring to our average DMP client. DMP stands for Debt Management Program client. Mm -hmm. Okay, and these are unsecured debts. These mm -hmm. are not mortgage okay. loan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when the, and the average net take-home pay of our client is about 2008 to 3000 mm -hmm. So on average, our DMP clients are owing uh, about 26 months of their net take-home pay. That is not yes. a small number. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, if this is um, the national number, mm -hmm. I think it could be um, skewed towards mm -hmm. because our assets, our properties are very expensive. Mm -hmm. and. The Sentosa Cove, mm -hmm. those po one property can easily worth what thirty mil, fifty mm -hmm. mil. Mm -hmm. So I think the the ratio could be a bit kind of right. being pulled, skewed. skewed towards yeah. that. Yeah. And I I just found recently, the top ten percent of Singaporeans, their income is something around ten to twelve thousand a month. Mm -hmm. But the but the uh, yeah. how should I say the eighty percentile and below. It's only about half. Um, and I think Job Street, or yeah, they did a report, and it was something that you know, what is you know the the salary that most Singaporeans would be happy with? The number was six thousand, you know, and the reality was maybe only twenty percent of Singaporeans make that or above. This cash yeah. that we have sitting in 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 the macro side of it, the yes. big picture. 20% of the population could own 80% yes. of it. Yeah, it could so be like that. So the other 80% yeah. of the population yeah. may not even have enough yeah. cash to... But to, yeah. to do we really have a big debt issue? Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, but um, I'm, I'm thankful. You know, we don't have really government coming in to, to, mm -hmm. to, to save anyone or something mm -hmm. like that. But I think we still have to be mindful. And um, 
MES came up with the new uh, mm -hmm. um, guidelines. Um, guidelines on the unsecured borrowing changes. I think they are trying to protect people from getting too much debt. Mm. Okay, um, but I would say that that new guideline will impact on people already in debt. Yes. Because you know when the new guideline is going to take place, you know people have been rolling for a long time, mm -hmm. which there are people who, who, who are rolling for a long time, they are going to be get caught mm -hmm. because they cannot roll anymore mm -hmm. and they have to start making payment. Mm -hmm. And and I would say that most of them wouldn't have the funds to pay. Mm -hmm. Then when they cannot pay, then what is going to happen to them? I think that the, the key thing is actually a stress test because people can pay now. Yes. But under duress, when there's a crisis, yes. when, when you know restructuring, yes. and, and we know yes. crisis happens very often nowadays, <laughs> Um, I think no one has stress tested this to say that in the now you can, but under the situation where you get a fifty percent cut in your salary, yeah. I think a lot of people will go underwater. Yes. Even the ten percent cut will be so, tough. Yeah. So the danger is like you can carry on rolling under the current carry environment. Under yeah. current, but every time there is a financial crisis, or, or, or even just a, a or restructuring within an organization. Mm. Yeah. No, and that's in fact that that's what I was uh, uh, saying about the ability to pay. Mm. The first one is the liquidity that one has, and again, you're talking about um, people who are in trouble, and mm. that's why they become your your clients. And I don't dispute mm. that there are people uh, in in such trouble. Mm. However, if you want to analyze whether debt in Singapore mm. is a national yes. problem or not. Yes. The data here clearly show that there is no problem mm. because liquidity is ample. Yeah. That's one. Mm. Second source of liquidity also comes from employment. Mm. Singapore has experienced very, very low mm. unemployment, even now about 2%. But we do have people who are not able to, do, to get the job that they used to do. But I think there are some people, they are being forced into getting a lower pay because they cannot find something equivalent to what they used to. That's right. And, and that happens in every society. Mm. But when you look at this data, mm. there is no basis at all to worry, particularly the credit card loan that we have been talking about. Mm. Again, I, I keep on thinking about why people worry so much about credit card loan. Because when you take, for example, uh, when they, t they, t they collect the number on credit card loan, they would collect the outstanding balance. I have outstanding balance, but I never borrow any credit card, right? Because once the, the due date comes, I pay. But, but you're, not, okay, you're not an yes. example yes. of yes. a person that goes yes. into debt. But uh, what is important again is not how much credit card loan outstanding there is in the society. But how how bad is the loan default? So so far, I try to look around, look at the number of loan default, and the only data that I found that came out from last week, loan default in bad debt in Singapore, is only two percent. It rose a little bit from one point seven seven percent to two percent. That so again two, is a macro view. 